Welcome back to my top 10 mod series. This time we're looking at the month of August. I have a handful of new mods here as well as some older ones that have been updated for Alpha 21. You'll find links to all of these in the description and there are timestamps as well down there if you'd like to jump ahead and skip some. So let's jump right in. First up is MP Logue's prefab pack. Normally I wouldn't include a prefab pack on this type of a list, but this one just really just blew me away. The intricacy and the attention to detail in these 32 prefabs is just stunning. From marvels of architectural design to supernatural mysteries that are underground, and there's even some popular movie sets, and there's some just plain old bizarre ones as well. This POI pack definitely has plenty to offer, and I can promise you that these POIs feel balanced and fair, in addition to just being immersive and blending in really well with like the vanilla game and the vanilla style for POIs, where it's just like cluttered and messy. And there's also good use of the new shapes and decor pieces from Alpha 21. All you have to do is drop this one into your mods folder and then generate a new world and you can discover all of these POIs for yourself. Are you tired of eating leather sandwiches to stay alive? Well, this new mod called Food Models by Just Alter might be just what you're looking for. This replaces the model for most of the canned food types and some of the drinks as well. A feature that's been heavily requested by the community but so far ignored by the developers. It's a simple mod, but it adds a ton of flavor, and I'm hoping to see it expanded to other food items in the future. Next up is a brand new user interface or UI mod. You all have eyeballs, so I won't describe it to you, but uh, this one reminds me a lot of both SMX UI and the Undead Legacy UI. It looks very clean to me and it's organized, and it's something that I could definitely get used to. So while you're waiting for the updated vanilla UI that's coming out in a future update, why not check out this one? It's called Backpack X UI and it's made by Ramos. By the way, I have all of these mods installed and active at the same time and I haven't observed any problems yet. So if you see something that you don't recognize, we'll probably get to it in a little bit. So here we are at a new trader, which is a part of the MP Logue prefab pack. And I'm here to look at the quests. This is part of the quests expanded mod by Dementive and it adds dozens of new quest types, but it doesn't really change the fundamental objective of a quest. You're still going to be doing mostly fetches and or clears, but this further classifies them by type. So you can select an urban, rural, survivor site, fast food, cave, gas station, diner, ranger station, cabin, office, military, outpost, warehouse, farm, apartment, store, city, building, skyscraper, or factory type of mission. <laughs> and each dialogue pop-up from the trader gives you a unique story if you're into that sort of role-playing aspect of it. And I checked over on the mod description and and it looks like at some point there was an option for a clear and defend quest, but this has been removed, at least temporarily due to some bugs, but perhaps we'll see its return again in the future. There's something synonymous about surviving the zombie apocalypse and armored school buses. And the apocalyptic school bus by Taddy231 makes that a reality by adding a craftable school bus to the game. The vehicle seems to be a bit faster than the 4x4 and it handles relatively well considering it's like 50 feet long. The crafting of the chassis and accessories will cost you nearly 1,000 steel, but the storage space is the largest I've ever seen and it has 20,000 hit points, a full 12,000 more than the 4x4. It unlocks alongside the 4x4 with Vehicle Adventures magazines, and I think it fits in nicely with the existing vehicles. Check it out. Now let's move on to some weapons packs. The first up is the updated Pants Ranged Pack by Pantstain. We've seen this one before with the four handguns that it added, but now it's been updated to include several more, including rifles, SMGs, and assault rifles. All of these weapons are unlocked via crafting skill magazines and can be found in loot or with traders and their stats are comparable to existing weapons, so they're not too overpowered. My favorite part of this pack is that you can see all of the mods that you put onto your weapon and there's a new realistic scope view which I wish was just the default for all weapons. Although it is a contender, this weapons pack isn't quite my favorite just yet. But next up, we have two new mods by Izayo, the Firearm Pack Extraordinaire. Previously, we've looked at the 556 Weapons Pack and the Shotgun Weapons Pack, but Izzy wasn't done there. The 556 Pack has been updated to include four new light machine guns. Of course, this also comes with the new 556 ammo type, which you can craft, purchase, and find in loot. These new machine guns feel just as good, if not better, than the existing vanilla guns, with the added benefit of being able to see all of the mods that you put onto the weapon, and the iron sights are even aligned, which is certainly the biggest gripe that I have about the vanilla game right now. I mean, 
Who made this? This is ridiculous. But if you're looking for something that packs a little bit more punch, how about some 762 weapons? The 762 pack contains several rifles and machine guns with the same level of quality that we've come to expect from Azayo. It also changes the ammo icon to match the icons we see with the 556 weapons pack. And there's also an optional mod that changes all of the other ammo icons like the 9mm and the 44 Magnum so that it all matches and it's the same theme. This is bar none the best set of new weapons I've ever seen and there are still more to come. But if you're the up close and personal type, I got a pair of melee mods just for you. The first is the Scrap Weapon and Tool Pack by The Script HD. This does just what the name indicates and it adds a scrap variant to all tools and melee weapons. And these fit into the progression scheme in between the Iron Age and the Stone Age. They can be crafted, purchased, or looted, and they jive really well with the sort of what I'm calling the goofy grunge aesthetic that the game already has. And last but certainly not least is the updated Weapons of Some Destruction mod by Joseph Patch. This mod has been a staple for the past several years and it adds several melee options to the game. In fact, it's divided into four parts. The Essentials, which adds just an assortment of weapons. Then there's the Medieval Pack, which has some melee classics. The Tactical Pack, which has some modern weaponry. And the Sci-Fi Pack, which adds a handful of futuristic weapons which behave very much like a stun baton with a charge and shock bonus. These are endgame items which are expensive to craft and like all others are lootable, purchasable, and craftable via the crafting skill magazines. Well, that is it for this month's top 10 mods list. Let me know what mods you're enjoying in the comments and I'll check them out. Anyways, I hope you're enjoying the end of your summer and I'll see you again at the end of September. Take care, everyone. Hey everyone, I just wanted to say thank you for watching, for leaving a like, but most of all, thank you to the long list of amazing supporters that you see right here. I hope this episode has earned your subscription and I can't wait to show you the next one. Best wishes to all and goodbye.